I was pretty young then. I was 19. I, I'm uh, 99. I was 21 then. I'm 101 now. I was 20 years old. And today, I'm 100 years old. I was 22 on that day. And this May, I'll be 104. I was 21 when the war broke out. And I'm 100. And two, 101 years old, working on 102. <laughs> you think I'll make it? <laughs> there was a time when these men feared they would never laugh again. 80 years ago, their world and ours changed forever. December 7, 1941. It was a day that changed the course of history. Japan launched a surprise attack on the U.S. Pacific Fleet docked in Pearl Harbor. The Arizona smashed, sunk, and burning on the first day of that treacherous attack which took the Americans completely by surprise. At 7.55 in the morning, Japan launches its first wave of attacks from these six aircraft carriers carrying roughly 400 or so airplanes. This first wave attacks Pearl Harbor itself. An hour later, the Japanese also launch a second wave of attacks to attack Pearl Harbor again and also similar sites. 2,403 Americans died in the attack. Eight battleships were destroyed, including the USS Arizona. Many men perished on that ship alone, about half of the entire loss of life at Pearl Harbor that day. If there ever was a picture of hell, it was right here where we are. The Arizona was right here? She was right here, and you can see her, the buoy in the water, his bow. She was two football fields long. She was a majestic ship. These battleships along Battleship Row, where we are here, that was the testosterone of the nation. Daniel Martinez is the chief historian at the Pearl Harbor National Memorial. There were sailors jumping in the water. There were sailors jumping in the water. That was on fire. That was on fire. They had no option in some cases and some of them had to hold their breath to get under the flames and come out and breathe again. It was hell here. It was an attack that pulled the United States into World War II. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. When the Japanese hit us, when Japan dropped those bombs, yeah. what did it do to us? I think we paused for a moment and understood that we weren't bulletproof, that we were vulnerable. And then what happened? And then we mobilized. We rolled up the sleeves, men and women, people from all uh, walks of life, all colors. We work together as a nation. United? United in defeating these enemies. And 80 years after that fateful day, the few survivors who at advanced ages are remarkably still alive came back to Pearl Harbor, to the USS Arizona Memorial that straddles the submerged battleship. Tell me what you remember happening that day. Well, I remember it all. We heard a screaming aircraft, and a moments later, a terrible explosion. Jack Holder, born in 1921, was on Ford Island that morning, working as a flight engineer. It's sort of hard for me to believe. Then when those torpedoes started hitting us, I couldn't believe. So I tried to count those torpedoes, but I lost count. And I don't know well, there's more than nine of them hit us. David Russell, born in 1920, was aboard the USS Oklahoma when it was hit and then began to capsize. It was such a big surprise and shock to, uh, to, to lose all those men. Frank Eamon, born in 1918, and perhaps the oldest known survivor from that day, was aboard the USS Pennsylvania as a young musician, lining up to play Morning Colors when his ship was bombed. It was instant confusion. Had scrabble confusion. Freeman Johnson, born in 1920, was down below on the USS St. Louis. From the boiler room, he could only hear the bombs. His ship later nicknamed the Lucky Lou because despite the attack, it made it out of the harbor with no casualties. It was the only ship that day where no one died. On December the 7th, I woke up early in the morning. 
they started firing at us. And the first thing you know, the window blew out. It scared the hell out of us. We turned on the radio, it says that it was always being attacked. And then we looked toward Pearl Harbor, you see all oh, black smoke coming out. Ralph Matsumoto, born in 1921, a Japanese American who witnessed the attack from a friend's home nearby. Feeling the fervor of patriotism, Ralph later enlisted in the U.S. Army. The entire attack on Pearl Harbor took only 75 minutes, but it changed these men's lives, as well as our nation, forever. It, uh, it turns a boy into a man. Did you know who was attacking? No, I had no idea. Because you don't, can't see anything. How did you feel that day when you saw those planes? Well, uh, first of all, I was in shock, of course, uh, and then uh, anger. I seen horror there that I'll never forget. I see the images, but I don't hear and I don't smell. What am I missing when I'm looking at this that you saw beyond just black and white images? The smell of burnt flesh is something that you never you, you never, you never, you just never forget. That anyone survived is remarkable. I didn't want to get in that water because I didn't want to get burnt. Oil from the Arizona covered the water's surface. As we heard from the historian, to swim to safety was to swim under a burning inferno. To see it firsthand, an image that will never fade. I still see those guys going through that fire. You still see that today? Oh, yeah. Especially when I get up in the morning and go to the bathroom, you think about World War II, what, what happened there, those guys burning. I don't, I don't know how it affects you, but it, you know, it affects me. As David Russell's ship began to sink, he found a rope, tossed it to a nearby ship, then, hand over hand, escaped above the flames. The only thing I want to do, I want to survive. I didn't want to die. 1,177 men died on the Arizona, more than 900 entombed in what is now a sacred watery grave. Every 30 seconds, a droplet of oil still escapes the sunken battleship. Veterans say the Arizona is still bleeding. Have you forgiven Japan? Uh, I, I don't know whether they call it forgiveness or not, but I don't have any hard feelings of it now. Others tell me they will never forgive. Did you hate Japan? I did. And now? I haven't lost much of that feeling. You're still angry? A lot of people say, well, you know, they're, uh, they're our friends now. I said, well, you believe what you want to. David, have you forgiven Japan? Yeah, you bet. We both have, haven't we? Yes, yes. But you have not, Jack. No, no. And you never will? Never will. After the attack, all Japanese, even Japanese Americans, were considered suspicious. Ralph Matsumoto was initially detained, but he later joined the U.S. military to fight for his country, the United States. You don't feel courageous? No, I don't. I'm just an average man. Four years after the attack, the U.S. dropped atomic bombs on Japan. Within seconds, Almost everything within a mile of ground zero was flattened. That decision cost more than 110,000 Japanese lives. The United States made a decision in World War II to drop a bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. What are your thoughts about that today? Very relieved. Relieved? That's the reason the war ended? Yes, yes. It saved millions of, of Japanese. If we had to invade them, their, their defenses and everything, and what it would take for us to invade Japan, we would have lost a million or two of our, of our men, and also probably three or four million of, of, of them also. So, so it was the right decision or the wrong decision? It, it was completely the right decision. To drop the bomb? Yes. Because it ended the war? It, it, it ended the killing of all, all the people. What do you think, Jack, about the decision was, to drop the bomb? It was definitely necessary. It did it, in the war. It was, it was the greatest thing we could have done. Necessary, yes. rather than saying it was a good thing to do. Yes. And this is coming from a man who has never forgiven Japan. That's right. 
What is it like for you to sit next to Ralph? You've never forgiven Japan. To you, is the same? Not at all. He's all American. Yeah. In the military, we're all brothers and sisters. You don't see him as a Japanese American? Not at all. And he served our country the same way you all did? Exactly. He deserves the same thing as any other military man. Maybe even more, because... Well, that's right. That took a lot of courage. That's exactly right, yeah. We talk about the group of you. Should we call you heroes? No, I've never, I've been called that many times, but I've never, when I joined the Navy, I took an oath and I just tried to live up to that oath. We're just doing a job, that's all. I think the heroes were just the regular ordinary seamen. I consider myself just an ordinary seaman who did the job that they were trained to do. A lot of people don't realize, I think, the military didn't win this conflict by themselves. The people at home, all their grandmothers and everybody, Rosie the Riveters and so forth, what a great job they done supporting the military. The nation came together. The nation came together. Did the nation come together in a way that we maybe haven't seen since? Yes. Do you think that you survived so that you could tell the story? Yes, that, that's what I think. I, I, I think what happened to all of us, that uh, we're here to, to keep spreading the word that we did have a Pearl Harbor. We were attacked very strongly, but, but we learned something at that time also. Be encouraged that we have always succeeded. We have always survived by, by being united together. Salute. 80 years later, in what may be their last visit, five men together at Pearl Harbor, honoring friends in this most hallowed final resting place. You look back there, how come I survived? Uh, and why did they die? Uh, and you don't yeah. have an answer to that, do you? No, no, I don't think anybody does. What do you feel as you stand here right now, knowing that the Arizona was there? Well, I guess, Kerry, I think of many things, but uh, you, you think uh, of all the poor souls we lost there. It was not necessary. I could still see the ship sitting there at 45 degrees covered in the smoke. Are you bonded, even though you didn't know each other before today? Oh, probably, yeah, because you know, we, what we went through, you know. We're all brothers now. Yeah. Huh? All brothers. That's right. Yeah. A brotherhood and a bond they won't ever forget. A day of infamy they hope no one will ever forget. Kerry Sanders, NBC News, Pearl Harbor. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.